Well, good morning, everyone. Hi. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm particularly pleased to, to be here for, for two reasons. Uh, the first, uh, we just had a, uh, a very uh, nice and, and, and juicy discussion with uh, senior members of the AIC, um, both management and um, strategic perspective people. Peter, of course, was there. Um, and <coughs> we are looking at ways in which we can combine our efforts to, to scope out the extent and nature and trend of a lot of the problems that we are facing here in the region. And by the region, I, I mean um, for us, everything from Mongolia down to Kiribati, uh, that's the footprint of the office that, uh, that uh, we cover from, from Bangkok. Second reason is to be able to, to, to engage with, uh, with you guys this morning, to get a sense of uh, uh, what you think of the points that, uh, that I'm going to make. The points that I'm going to make are reflective of our, our assessment of, the, of a number of threats related to human security in the region. And uh, after I share them with you, I'll also give you some indication of the type of things that, uh, that uh, might make sense as a response. And within that, the, uh, the modest things that UNODC is trying to do in the region. It'll take probably about 40 minutes to get through the presentation. So uh, it's a good thing that it's before lunch and in the morning, fresh. Um, and I'd be very, very happy to get uh, to, to engage in, in a discussion with you afterwards. Uh, questions, answers. Also, if there's anything that you feel uh, unclear about or uh, you have a particular view on when it comes up, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, I, I tend not to be too formal. I'm more interested in getting uh, to understand what, uh, what's in your mind about what's in mind. Um, <clears throat> so, about, about us. The, and in, I'll take a cue from this gentleman here, and I will also take my jacket off. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot or anything, sir. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, UNODC. We are, we've been around for, in various avatars for about 30 years. 30, 35 years. Um, formerly, we were focusing exclusively on the issue of drug control. But because of a number of uh, issues uh, relating to organizational change, we've had a, quite a few corporate mutations in the past 15 years. Um, and we, we are now responsible for the UN's, res um, the UN as UN's assistance to uh, our member states in, in four main areas, um, crime, drugs, corruption, and terrorism. The program that we are running in East Asia and the Pacific touches all of those in, in, in various ways and to certain degrees. This is, the, this is a map depicting the, where our program uh, touches in East Asia and the Pacific. Our base of operations is here in Thailand, and we have a number of country offices we have a need for a better battery. Um, we have a number of country offices in the region, and uh, uh, I've also got with me, um, uh, as part of the team here, uh, three colleagues, uh, two of whom, it seems, are in the room. Is Phil around? Oh, Phil, here you are. In fact, maybe if you, please don't, no need, this is not to get applause or anything, but just to show you who's here. Uh, George, Phil, you want to stand up? Um, uh, Sebastian is, is the guy that's still standing, um, and he's our, and, we, and that's what I'd wanted, <laughs> um, and he's, uh, he's our guy on, uh, basically on migrant smuggling. Uh, George and Phil are, are essentially two-thirds of a counter-terrorism team that we have uh, in, in the region. Uh, two of the guys are here with me in, in, in Thailand and, and Phil is over there in, in Fiji. And we are, as a team, much more gender balanced than we look in this particular segment of the team, <coughs> just to let you know. Uh, okay, this is going to be the thickest part of the presentation. This will come reasonably s uh, slimly, and uh, as will this. Um, that particular, that particular uh, slice of the presentation is going to be focused on drawing conclusions from two main reports. Sorry, bad body language. Apologies to the cameraman. Um, 
this one, which is a fairly heavy uh, duty thing, uh, both weight-wise and, and in content, I, I think. Globalization of crime. It's a transnational organized crime threat assessment. The very first time this has been done, and um, we, we, we launched this a couple of months ago. The other main conceptual uh, driver of the presentation is going to be the World Drug Report which is something we have been doing for about 15 years. Um, and, uh, and the most recent one of that was also launched in June. So this is, both of these are pretty fresh, fresh-ish, um, information-wise. <coughs> but before I start any of this, I'd like to share with you something that, uh, that I've been working on uh, for some time. It's, um, the, the, what the, most of the rest of the presentation is, is, is corporate stuff uh, that I've adapted and adjusted. This is this is my personal view uh, about what we're trying to tackle. And um, I, I, I've done this because I believe that, <coughs> that the challenges which face modern leadership require of our leaders to elevate their thinking above parochial issues, and with all due respect to people in this room that might be dealing with precursor chemicals or some form of forensic laboratory, whatever. Um, there are bigger issues at stake here, and they're all, and this may sound glib, uh, they're all intertwined. And it's up to us uh, um, to, 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 and our managers to recognize those threats. The slide that I'm about to share with you will take about five minutes to get through, but I, I, I'd like to ask you to try to walk with me on this, um, in, in, uh, to try in the sense that I may be way off base. So please help me to improve it. It'll look at the challenges that we face as a species, basically, and importantly, how we govern ourselves. What are the things that can be used to adjust our response to those challenges and the results of that, whether benign or malign? Sebastian, can you read that from the back? If you can't, I'll tell. I'll, I'll, I know it's a small. Uh, the this is a, this is my sort of a, what's the word bucket list of um, of things which we are challenged with right now. Um, we are o the overpopulation of 6.8 billion people. By some estimates, China alone needs a planet to feed. Uh, and resource its population in terms of raw materials and, and water and so forth. Um, the, 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 the issue of climate change. Um, there is, you know, there, there, there are a number of, 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 of denialists and so forth and uh, there may be people in the room who have questions about whether climate change is, is real or not. This is my personal view. I am very worried about what I see. Um, water shortages, destruction, strip mining of the oceans, famine, deforestation, pandemics, HIV, Hep C. The, then we move into things that more directly touch us as human beings. The, 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 the globalization, the immense market forces that are driving the movement of goods and people all around the planet in a way that has largely escaped our ability to track and regulate them. Now I say that without a sense of wanting to seem totalitarian, but it is because, as we will soon see at least in the presentation, it is because our ability to, to govern and control some of those movements is because that has moved ahead of our ability to do so that transnational and organized criminal syndicates have moved into that space and are now using it um, uh, to some significant disadvantage.